How's everyone doing? Jags Nation here to bring you another video. And today we have a special guest, Brandon, who is my co-host with 904 and more. How are you doing today, man? Doing good. Doing good. Getting one step closer to football every day. So football, we're going to go ahead and rank the offenses. We got uh, tiers of S, which is pretty much means the best of the best. Then we got grades A, B, C, D, and F. We're going to go through each team and uh, give our grades of the offense. Now, they could have a good offense, but a bad defense or vice versa. This is only offense. So let's start things off with the Tennessee Titans. Where do you kind of put in them? Uh, <laughs> this all, to me, just comes down to, I feel like, Robert Woods and Burks. Um, they got rid of their best wide receiver um, that they've had in a very long time with A.J. Brown to the Eagles. And they replaced it with Burks, who's a rookie, and he's having some issues in training camp. But Jamar Chase had issues in training camp in preseason, and look how great he played. Um, I don't expect that from him, but you never know what could happen. So it really – it Titans, to me, are a very unknown team, minus Derrick Henry. Like, outside of him, I really don't know how this team's going to do. I don't know how Austin Hooper's going to do. Um, I was listening to a podcast where they had a Titans insider – kind of talking and they actually really like Austin Hooper and they're going to try to go back to more like 12 personnel and have two tight ends that worked. Um, they didn't do much of that last year, but they did it two years ago with Arthur Smith. And after he moved on, they didn't like it. So they're going to try to go back. So he might have a bigger role. So we could see, but I just because of Derek Henry, I feel like it is a solid B tier. Um, he is the best running back in the league and you do have some young pieces that could help. Tannehill's not going to He's not a terrible quarterback. He's right about middle of the pack. So I feel like mid B, lower B tier is kind of like where I would put the Titans. No, absolutely. I was actually going to say B as well. Until Derrick Henry starts slowing down, um, I think a B is a perfect range. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how they utilize Robert Woods. Obviously, Robert Woods coming off the injury last year with the Rams. But I think Robert Woods is a very underrated wide receiver. Yeah. If, if A.J. Brown never got traded, A.J. Brown and Robert Woods would be a very, very dangerous duo, in my opinion. Um, but they still have some good pieces of offensive line. Like you said, Ryan Tannehill, kind of like middle of the pack quarterback. Nothing special, you know, about him, but nothing, you know, that's terrible. That's going to cost them, you know, you many games. But as long as they have Derrick Henry, give me a, they're at least going to be a B. So I think B is, you know, a good spot for them. Yeah, 100%. They're kind of like, I feel like they're just, like I said, their defense may be an A. We'll see how that turns out kind of situation. But offensive wise, I feel like that's definitely going to hold them back this year. No, absolutely. Um, next up, we have the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins, obviously, you know, a few months ago, went ahead and traded for a wide receiver, Tyreek Hill. You have Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, uh, Mike Kosicki. Offense line got better. Um, they brought in Sonny Michelle, uh, some other running backs as well. So they have a lot of star power on that uh, offensive side of the ball, but it's going to be what's, you know, the big question mark is can two or throw the ball deep? How's his, how's his you know, accuracy? How are they – going to utilize two to the best of his ability. I think you're going to see a lot of screen pass, a lot of short slants. Um, but with Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill, I think that's all you honestly probably need, in my opinion. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give them a B as well. Until I see Tua, you know, prove himself to take that next step, um, I'm going to put them in a B range. But if he did take the next step, they definitely have all the talent and star power to be an A offense. Yeah, I think they're upper B for sure. I like them more than the Titans just because of all the additions that they did. Um, if they had a like Pro Bowl level quarterback or like a proven level quarterback, I would even say like a Kirk Cousins. I would put this as an A tier. Like yeah. they even got, I mean, the running backs you mentioned, like they got Chase Edmonds, Raheem Moser. They got um, Alex Ingold, who's one of the better fullbacks as well. They really, really up graded their offense and then they got Mike McDaniels who was the offense coordinator for the 49ers which we saw how Debo Samuel kind of did you saw Brandon Ayuk how they use George Kittle they don't really do vertical passing it, like you said it's a lot of screens it's a lot of like within five yards and that's where two is dangerous two is very very accurate very quick but he just doesn't have the long ball but like you said you don't really need the long ball when you got athletic freaks like Tyreek Hill like Jalen Waddle, Mike Isecki is one of the most athletic tight ends in the league too. He can really run. He's more of a, he's like the Evan Ingram type where he doesn't really put a hand in the dirt. He's always basically just standing up in the slot kind of situation. And then you got receiving running backs with Edmonds, Moser. It's just, they're, they're going to be passing it the ball a lot, but it's going to be a lot of quick, easy passes and just try to get their guys open. No, I agree 100%. Let's move on to a, uh, another AFC East opponent. And that is the New York Jets. Um, where do you have them ranked? 
Man, it is a tough one. Um, their team overall, I really actually like this roster. Um, I think it's a good mixture of young guys with some solid veteran guys. And one example is like their offensive line with adding T Tomlinson. You got Elijah Very Tucker, who is the young guy coming in. Um, they have a battle with Becton. That's the only drama, I think, really with this team is if he's going to be the left tackle or the right tackle. And apparently he's like showing up overweight and stuff. So little issues there, but their wide receiving core is looking pretty good. It's young. Their running back core looks good and young. It's all up to Zach Wilson. And that's the biggest issue. I personally don't really care for Zach Wilson. Um, I think he's only good when it, things are going right or when he scrambles. I think when he has to actually dissect a play and the first option isn't open, he he struggles and he holds the ball too long and he let he, what he didn't lead the league in sacks, but he was like third or second. He only played like 13 games. And their offensive line was hurt that wide receivers weren't getting open, but it's still that that's really bad. So he's holding the ball longer than he should have. That means he's not reading the field as much. So I don't really think he's gonna progress too much more. But I think this is, to me, this is a C-tier team. I think this is a C-tier through and through. They're not going to absolutely, maybe in two or three years, and if Zach Wilson makes improvements, they can move up to a B, possibly an A, because I really like this lineup, actually. I just think Zach Wilson just really takes it down. Yeah, actually, I was going to have to put, put them as a C as, as well. The biggest question mark is, uh, you know, Zach Wilson, but you, you have Elijah Moore, you have Young Stud there. Um, Corey Davis, somewhat proven. He's a good number three, number two guy, around eight, 900 yards every year. You saw uh, draft Brees Hall in uh, the second round, and he also had Michael Carter. So you have a good running back duo. Um, offense line got better uh, as well. Um, but overall, they have a lot of young studs out there that have a lot of good potential in this league. So I think C is very generous. I think that's a good spot. And like you kind of said, it comes up to Zach Wilson. And Zach Wilson can take the next step. Next year, they probably can be, be a B, and the year after that, potentially an A. But Overall, I think they, they did a good job of, you know, at least giving Zach Wilson some pieces to, um, you know, uh, build off of. Yeah, if he doesn't succeed with this offense and by – they'll probably give him at least one more year because it's still second year. Usually that year three for quarterbacks really, really take off. So he'll probably get two more years of this offense. And if that third year, so two seasons from now, midseason, if he's not looking great, they're probably going to pull him, is my guess, kind of situation we consider a bust because he has so much talent around him right now. And he probably, out of all the quarterbacks, I feel like even with Trevor, Justin Fields, Trey Lance, Mac Jones, he has the best setup around him pieces wise that I think if you took any of the other teams and put it next year, like overall wise, probably one of the better lineups for these second year quarterbacks. No, I agree. Um, next up, we have the Cleveland Browns. Now this is very interesting because if Deshaun Watson plays the whole year, not suspended at all, I think they have an ace offense. They have Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, Deshaun Watson, David Njoku, Amari Cooper. Um, people's one Jones. of the best offensive lines. Too. Yeah, one of the best offensive lines. So that team is stacked offensively, in my opinion. But I do think he's going to end getting suspended. That's kind of what the rumors are, you know, are going, going around. And I don't think Baker Mayfield is going to want to play for them either. Um, I don't think that's ever going to get fixed. So obviously that comes down to, uh, I think, Jacoby Brissett more likely. Mm -hmm. So, but because they have Nick Chubb, Cream Hunt, and all that, I am going to go ahead and put give them a B because I do think they have the pieces to still be good. But like I said, if they had Deshaun Watson, I think this would be an A offense. Yeah, I agree. Um, the quarterback really plays a big role in this. Um, all the news is pretty much he's going to get suspended for at least a year. Um, and that I've heard that's almost like could possibly minimum at least a year. So we'll see what happens there. Um, if he gets the full year, J Baker's going to get cut because teams like the Panthers are probably just waiting for him to get cut rather than trade for him kind of situation. So he's going to get cut or traded for basically nothing. And then you have Jacoby Brissett, where it's is a pickle for the Browns. Do they just run with Brissett or do they trade for Jimmy Garoppolo? That's yeah. pretty much the only two. Or maybe there's a switch with Sam Darnold and – Baker, you know, kind of situation, but um, either way, I, I think it's a lower B. Um, the wide receiving core isn't great. The running back group is one of the best, but if Jacoby Rossett's running the team, this might get moved down to even a C tier, I feel like. But I, so I, feel, I feel like it's been French B, but like you said, if Watson was on this team, this is an A team, like without set, but it does not seem like he's going to play 
major, minimum majority of the season. So you can't – I don't yeah. feel comfortable giving them an A. Yeah, I think best case for right now, Watson is eight games. That's best case. I think that is like – Personally, I feel like that is like absolute. I, I think there will be a pretty big uproar if he only gets eight games. Yeah, you know what I mean, like good on the NFLPA for trying to like give, that would be like their best job they've ever done, kind of situation. Yep, I agree. Next up is our beloved Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm putting on exactly where the Jets are at. I feel like he might be pretty similar in that sense. Yeah, I guess we had talked about um, about I'm posting put him above the Jets. Um, I know that we lost to them last year, bias, whatever you want to say. I like Trevor Lawrence way more than I like Zach Wilson. Um, and I don't think the pieces are too different between the teams. Um, I feel like they both, both teams added a lot of free agency. Um, Jets did way more in the, um, obviously during the draft, Jaguars did almost nothing offensively minus backup center and backup running back kind of thing. So everything was purely free agency. But I just feel like Trevor Lawrence is just so much better than Zach Wilson. We yeah. see the tapes. I get the 17 interceptions kind of thing. But one of the worst run organizations last year from a coaching standpoint, and they still almost won five games, really. And I just I just feel like Trevor Lawrence is going to take that next step with Doug Peterson. And I think Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, Zay Jones, Marvin Jones, ETN, and Robinson are still going to be a very powerful team but I think they're going to have spurts where they're not going to score. You know, I think, I think it's going to be like some games are going to score 30 and other games are going to score like 14, you know, I, it's just going to be like, what week is it? Cause they're still young. So we'll no, see absolutely. what happens. So that's why I, I feel comfortable with like the higher end of the C tier. Yeah. I don't think you'll ri- realize how much um, having ETM back is going to be huge for Trevor Lawrence. I mean, mm-hmm. he just watching, obviously I'm, I'm not trying to get too hyped up, you know, over just, you know, watching videos of him like training and all that, but he looks so much faster and quicker with his cuts than last year. Yeah. I think, uh, I think he's going to come back better than, than ever, even though we didn't see him play last year besides preseason, but I'm super excited for ETN. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think I would put them slightly above the jets, but I think C tier is very, you know, reasonable for them. Yeah. Um, so next up, we have the Detroit Lions. Where do you have the D- Detroit Lions at? Man, this is another team. I, it's all about the quarterback in the NFL, man, because this team is also, in my opinion, pretty well stacked outside of the quarterback. Um, I think Detroit has made leaps and bounds to where they were two years ago, especially even last year. Um, their offensive line is rebuilt. TJ Hawkinson is legit. Amon, Amon Ross St. Brown is – going to be a good wide receiver swift and williams are good one two running back and then you had a dj chart and and the one of the best wide receivers to come out since not obviously for a long time a lot of receivers are coming out but in my opinion number one receiver in this class with williams that once he comes back, i think he'll he may get on the pump pup list he might miss six games four games we'll see what happens kind of thing but i think once he's fully involved with brown and chart and swift and hawkinson and they have Josh the Reynolds line. too. The what? They have Josh Reynolds at all. Well, who played? Yeah, and yeah. like literally, when you look at this roster, it's actually pretty good. Like, you, if they had insert almost any other quarterback, because um, Jared Goff is probably like a twenty-second ranked quarterback, twenty-third. And that's being generous, like, yeah. Yeah, and that's generous. I mean, he did go to the Super Bowl, um, and you still have to play good. He's accurate. He's not going to do a lot of amazing things where he's not gonna be bad so it really puts it tough because I, I look at the roster and I almost want to give it B but then I see Jared Goff and I think he really limits this offense significantly that I feel like I'm more comfortable with maybe like just above the Jaguars no, I was about to say I think they're slightly above the Jags just because if it, it shows how well well this run this league needs a quarterback like you need to have that next level quarterback to enter even to enter a tier B tier. You can get there if you have a proven guy, but man, this Lions team, if they had, even when they had Ryan Tannehill, this would probably be an upper B in my opinion, or even who's a Jameis wins. Yeah. Not maybe, not, but Matthew Stafford, let's say Matthew Stafford. I would almost put this as an A if Matthew Stafford would have stayed with the Detroit Lions and they had this roster, I would look at them and say, they're probably a playoff contender. Where Jared Goff, I'm looking at like maybe they could push for that last wild card spot, but I'm not seeing it, kind of thing. So that's the level of difference that we're seeing here. No, absolutely, I agree 100. I think that's a good spot, right? Be uh, C and right in front of the Jaguars. 
Um, next up, we have the Minnesota Vikings. I'm a huge fan of the Vikings this year. I think, believe it or not, I think they can potentially win the division. I really do believe that. Obviously, you have Dalvin Cook, um, you have Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen. Irv Smith's coming back from injury, so hopefully, you know, he's good to go. He'll, they'll mm -hmm. have their tight end. Offensive line, you know, I would say is average at least. Um, I'm a big fan of Kirk Cousins, and just because of the weapons he has and obviously having Dalvin Cook, I think it is a low tier A or at least a high tier B. But since we have no one in A, I'm going to go ahead and give them an A. Yeah, I think I'm fine with this. Um, Justin Jefferson is one of the best wide receivers in the league. Dalvin Cook's one of the best running backs in the league. The offensive line is pretty good. It's not amazing, but it's pretty good. Irv Smith could possibly really, like you said, he was hurt all last year. He was one of those fantasy favorites to be like a sleeper kind of pick, and he just got hurt. Um, Tyler Coughlin, or Coughlin, I can't remember his last name, is gone. So he kind of has the full range of that offense as a tight end room. They're obviously okay with him being the number one tight end. Kirk Cousins actually silently has really good stats. Um, so I, I kind of agree, and I could see bottom A, high B for sure. Um just because if Kirk Cousins is just a little bit better in primetime games, man, like when the games really, really matter, this could possibly, you could almost convince me to be like an upper A and probably like a top 10, top seven offense in this league. But because of Kirk Cousins, I think it kind of chills between like the 10 and 12. And I think we'll see that kind of play out as we go throughout the video. No, absolutely. Um, next up, we have Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I said Tom Brady because go ahead and give me an A. You sure you don't want to go S? Uh, you know what? I mean, I honestly, yeah, actually, yeah, until Tom Brady retires, I'm going to put Tom Brady in the S. Yeah, that's probably the best. I mean, you got Brian Leftwich. You still got Bruce Aarons. I know he's not the head coach anymore, but kind of like taking that. Got playoff Lenny still. Yeah, you got Leonard Fournette. I really like their draft picks. Their wide receiving core is still Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. You got Russell Gage. I really like Tyler Johnson. Scotty Miller is still yeah. there. Cameron yeah. Brates, a fine tight end. Like, you still got – Worfs is an all-pro. Ryan Jensen is really good. Von Smith is still good. So, it's just like – and you just got Tom Brady. He's the greatest quarterback of all time. As much as I hate always saying that and because I've all, never really cared – I like new – I like the Tampa Brady more than – No, I was about to say, I hated I hated Tom Brady at the Patriots, but him going to Tampa, I do not mind him at all. I don't either. Like he's I feel like fun. he's taking the whole, like, beach vibe in Tampa and just being like, you know what, it's always sunny here. It's – I don't have to deal with those New England winners anymore and things like that. I, and I just feel like he, he knows this is his team. It's not he's competing with Belichick. So I feel like he's happier. And I fun, actually. this this team is going to be a Super Bowl contender again, um, especially the way the NFC is like played out this year. It's only like four teams, in my opinion, that really have a shot. So, and the Bucs are one of them. They're probably the favorite next to the Rams. So I to me, I feel like they are a good first S tier they may not be the best offense in the league but as long as you have Tom Brady I looked up just randomly I looked up um because I had like the whole Jimmy Smith stat in my head and I I looked it up most concise you know Mike Evans has had eight years of over a thousand receiving yards yeah he's never eight had under a thousand he he is one behind Jimmy Smith he is one behind Tim Brown he is I believe tied with Terrell Owens like already like he might be one of the most underrated wide receivers in the league with Mike Evans kind of situation. And all he does is just put up thousand yards and double digit touchdowns every year. And no one even talks about him. So yeah. I feel like he just all this together. I feel like the bucks are just an S tier all the way around. No, I agree 100% with that. Next up is the good old San Francisco 49ers. You know, what's funny about the 49ers and a lot of these teams, a lot of these teams have good offenses, but it's going to come down to the quarterback situation. I didn't see much for Trey Lance last year. Obviously, he I see he played in a few games. I think he had a few rushing touchdowns, threw a few passes, um, but nothing like you know that stood out, you know, out of the ordinary that was going to make him. Oh, this guy's going to be the next, you know, MVP. I think he has a chance to be very a very good quarterback in this league, but I haven't seen enough from him. But because they do have like Debo, uh, obviously have George Kittle and all that, and the offense line is still pretty good. Um, I think they are like a low tier B until I see, you know, train lands take the next step. So I think we'll compromise. I think they're like right here. Right. Above the time. In, in my I'll opinion, that, yeah. um, just because I think they have a better overall offense than the Titans. The Titans are very dependent on Derrick Henry while the 49ers have Elijah Mitchell, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, you know, there's, 
Kyle Jusevex, Trent Williams, like they have really good overall players. It's just like you said, we have no idea what Trey Lance is going to be. I feel like Trey Lance is going to have like a Jalen Hurts kind of year where he's going to put up a lot of like fantasy points because of the rushing, but he's not going to be an overall great quarterback. Yeah. He's going to have his issues. He's going to have some problems, but he's going to put up really good fantasy numbers, which I think he could be a sleeper fantasy quarterback and take him probably as QB two right now. But I feel like he's going to get control of the offense, really good running back core. And I think they're just going to run the ball. They're going to take the Eagles, like basically playbook that Eagles ran last half of the year. And they're going to lead the league in rushing kind of situation. But because of his unknown and things like that, this is a solid B to me. And if he becomes like Jalen Hurts and is even better than Jalen Hurts, they move up to an A, possibly an S tier, depending on how well Trey Lance progresses throughout his first, his, not his first year, but his first real year, realistically, as a starter. No, yeah, I agree 100%. Um, I, I think it's going to come down to Trey Lance, a lot of like the Jaguars, the Jets, um, let's see here, the Browns, the 49ers, even the, uh, the Lions, all this comes down to the quarterback. You know, yep. they, they all have somewhat of good, good pieces around them. It's just going to see which quarterback's going to take the next step and lead them in the right direction. Which I, I feel like describes B and C perfectly. Yeah. Like, to me, like, A and above is, like, you have your quarterback. D and F are, like, you don't know who your quarterback of the future is going to be. B and C is, like, you have potential there, but you're not 100% sure. Or you have a solid quarterback, but around the pieces are not great. I feel like that is like the definition of B and C and kind of like where we're already making the distinctions between each level. No, absolutely. 100%. Um, next up, we have the Atlanta Falcons. I assume this is about to be either our first D or F yeah. on this list besides Kyle Pitts. Yeah. They have Cordell Patterson, but besides Kyle Pitts, they honestly, in my opinion, I don't, I don't think the offense is good at all. Um, I kind of feel bad for Kyle Pitts a little bit, but I'm going to let you do the honors and ranking them either D or F. It's not a high D. It's either a high F or a low D. Um, the reason I say this is because I like Drake London. Um, I was, they do have Drake he, London, yeah. He was my number two receiver in this class out, outside of Williams. So having him there, and then they also brought in Brian Edwards from the Raiders. So they're yeah, going to be the right? tallest team out. Brian Edwards is like 6'3". Drake London's like 6'4". Kyle Pitts is like 6'5", 6'6". So they are just going to, I feel like, and then you got Cordell Patterson, who had a very, very good year last year playing that wide receiver running back hybrid role. Um, I think he still has at least one more year in him. Marcus Mariota is a service. He took Tennessee Titans to the playoffs. Um, so I feel like he's not the worst quarterback option. I feel like he has all the skill sets. He just doesn't process quick enough to be and make the right decisions. I think that costs him. So I don't think F. I have a few teams the, in my these, mind I think are F. I don't think there's many teams that are F, but there's a few. And I personally would rather have this offense than I would some of these Fs that I see still on the board. Yeah. Um, They're not gonna, uh, it's not going to finish here, though. It's going to be more probably like down here. But it's, it's nowhere near C. But I, I just don't know if I can give an F to Pitts, Edwards, London, Patterson, Jake Matthews kind of situation like they at least have some pieces there where it's like go later like I said maybe in a few picks that it, it looks abysmal and I don't think this is abysmal yeah um you, you know I respect that I think that's a good that's a good area to be D um next up we have the Baltimore Ravens um Lamar Jackson continues to get better as a thrower um I think uh he's going to continue to get better um each and every year and I think he's obviously won MVP, so he's a proven quarterback in this league. Unfortunately, they did lose Marquise Brown. You know, they traded him to the uh, to the Cardinals, but I still think, you know, they, they have Mark Andrews. The offensive line still good. They have other good pieces around him, and since they do have that quarterback that they are settled on for the future, I think they are lower tier A. Yeah, to me, they're definitely an A. I've, I'm pretty high on them as well. I think Tyler Linderman was a great draft pick. Ronnie Stanley is a great left tackle. Mark Andrews is easily one of the top three tight ends. You got Lamar Jackson. Their running back group is deep, but their wide receiver core is terrible. It's just that's what's hindering them from being a nest here. Their wide receiver core just isn't good enough to push them ahead up. Um, personally, though, I think I like them more than the Vikings um, just because of Lamar Jackson's capability of playmaking where he can change the game while Kirk Cousins can't. 
So I personally just like it slightly more than the Vikings. Okay. Well, we can agree to just disagree on that one. I like the Vikings slightly a little bit more, but they're both a tier. And I think that's all that matters is that uh, obviously I think Vikings have overall, like, you know, the better like weapons, but Lamar Jackson's easily the better quarterback. So obviously I think quarterback is more important than obviously having your weapons. Yeah. That's, that's kind of why I just think they're slightly, it's picking hairs, but like I said, yeah, too, I'm going to pick Lamar Jackson over Kirk Cousins. Next up, we have the Washington commander still kind of weird to say, um, obviously, you know, Terry McLaurin, who just got a, a deal today, um, three-year contract. You have Antonio Gibson, Logan Thomas, um, offense line, you know, I think it's at least average. Carson Wentz, this is his proving year. It's really comes down to Carson Wentz. I do think they have some pretty good pieces, you know, with the offense. But since I think it, it's a question mark with Carson Wentz, I think they are a C tier. I would argue that they're a D tier. Um, I think outside of McLaurin and Gibson, it's not good, in my opinion. I feel like their offensive line is a lot of guys where you look at the name and outside of Norwell, I'm like, who? Um, Wes Schwartzel, Chase Rulier. Um, honestly, I'm going to say I don't think I've ever heard of those guys before, or at least I heard of their names before. Um, I know Kosi at least had a decent kind of situation. Well, they have Curtis Samuel, too. I keep forgetting about him. Yeah, Curtis Samuel, though, is always hurt. That's the whole – like. And then Jahan Dotson's a rookie, and I don't know, man. I just look at this team, and I'm like, I don't like it as an offense. Yeah, I, don't, I think they're like a, a low C, like a very low C, but if you if you think high D, we can do high D as well. I'm fine with putting C. Um, Carson Wentz isn't a terrible quarterback. It's just personally, I look at this offense, I think it's going to struggle. I, I think outside of McLaurin and Gibson, there's no playmakers. Their offensive line is not very good. Carson Wentz is getting less and less mobile every year. And I just feel like that's just, it's just not a great team, but I'm fine with putting it probably last of the C tier kind of thing, just because yeah. Carson is a little bit better and they do have some weapons that probably put him over Atlanta. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the Chicago Bears, man, Chicago Bears, they're not doing Justin Fields any favors right now over there in Chicago. No. Donald Mooney's probably your number one. You have Pringle, who's going to be your number two. I, I'm a big fan of, of Mooney. I want to put that out there. I think he can. Yeah. He, he was a thousand yards receiver last year. Um, I don't know if he's ever going to be a number one, but he's a really good number two. But I, I think he has a lot of upside. Obviously, I have Dave Montgomery, who I think is a very underrated running back. But overall, I, I just don't think they're giving Justin Fields enough weapons. Um, I would personally give them a D. This is where we go again. This is my team that I think is the worst team in all of football by far. I, I, think I, gonna average, I think they're going to average like 14 points a game. I, yeah. I hate this team. Um, they did nothing but get worse. And they're, I think they're playing on let's have the number one overall pick. And when we don't need a quarterback and someone is going to trade us like three first rounds and like a player for so that way they can go get the quarterback, whatever quarterback they deem as number one. Cause there's really, really good quarterbacks coming out this year. They're playing the we're gonna suck, and then we're gonna get a crap ton of ransom players, players yeah. pretty much for a trade out situation, which I think is a terrible way to do it when you have a young quarterback like Justin Fields, who in my mind should have been the second overall pick to the Jets. Like and if their defense Justin Fields on the Jets right now, they may be like higher than the Jaguars kind of situation. Yeah. But it's just I I would almost argue this is the worst offense in football, and I think that deserves an F. If no, anything gets an F to me, it's the Bears. We we can we can give them an F. Sorry for all the Bears fans, but you got to look realistic. This is and, the and the, their their defense got worse, and their defense so that defense obviously not yeah. putting them in you know better positions, um you know field positions. The defense um, isn't terrible, but stay away, Khalil Mack. There's other guys you got rid of. Uh, yeah. Players you got older, and, and they still have Eddie Jackson. They still have Jalen Johnson, Raquan Smith, Robert Quinn. I'm so pretty sure Robert guys. Quinn. They're. I think they're. Aren't they? They're going to be trading Robert Quinn. I, kept I think so. Yeah. That's that's what I heard. Um, so he could, especially if he's gone. I I think they're in the tank mode for any of these teams that are on here. I think them in Seattle are the two teams that are like, screw it, we're going to be terrible and get the draft picks and possibly your quarterback next year. Yeah. Because I think they're just they're just calling it quits already in May and June. Yeah, absolutely. Um, next up, the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and say they're S tier. I know it might be a little too early, especially with Joe Burrow having like you know, a real, you know, big first year, even though his first year was, in, you know, injured. But you have the best trio of wide receivers, I think, with uh, T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd. You have Joe Mixon. Your offensive line, you, you, help, you improved your offensive line, which are obviously last year was probably the reason you lost the Super Bowl was because of your offensive line. So your offensive line gets better. Um, you still have the good wide receivers. You, you have your quarterback of the future in Joe Burrow. I think they're an S tier. 100%. I think this could possibly be right up there with the Bills and Chiefs, Chargers, kind of Bucks. I think they're S tier, man. Like their weakest position is Hayden Hurst at tight end. That's yeah. their weakest position. And to be honest, I kind of like Hayden Hurst. Um, I think he, got he got overshadowed by Pitts last year um, for the Falcons. It wasn't for that. Hurst was actually, if you look at his stats, he's not a terrible tight end. He's not a great tight end. But if he's your worst player on offense, you're doing something right. And Joe Burrow is going to be lining himself up for MVP type season. I feel like with Jamar Chase, Higgins, it, it's just Joe Mixon, Prairine. Like there's nothing bad about this team anymore. Like you said, they fixed everything that was bad about it and made it a hundred times better. So I think that I have to reward them in S tier. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm excited to watch Joe Burrow uh, light it up again this year. Oh yeah. Um, next up is the Dallas Cowboys. See, this is what I think is interesting with the Dallas Cowboys. They have the quarterback. They have Tony Pollard, Zeke Elliott. They obviously have CeeDee Lamb. Offense line, I would say, obviously has gotten worse over the years because of age and all that injury. So they're at least average. But what's holding them back, in my opinion, is Mike McCarthy. I don't think he is the best yeah. coach out there. Um, I think he is what's holding this team back. The team has the talent to be good. Um, I think Dak Prescott's, you know, a pretty good quarterback. I would say, you know, probably between anywhere from like 8 to 12, I would put him at. Yeah, that's kind of where I was thinking too. Um, and since they do have the quarterback and they have, you know, the, the wide receivers, the running backs, the tight end and Dalton Schultz, I'm going to go ahead and say like lower A, but if they had a, be a better coach, I think they would be S tier. I think I agree with that. I think they're lower A, upper B. You can make the argument for either or. Um, definitely the coaching doesn't help them. And I think their wide receiving core doesn't help them. Um, Gallup is still hurt. Um, he's going to miss a good amount of this season. Um, that puts James Washington and Jalen Tolbert as their two and three, not overly enthused. They lost um, their right. They lost some guys on the offensive line. I think they reached with Tyler Smith. It's just, I'm not thrilled with this offense, but it's not a bad offense. Like it's still a good team. I think, but I, I agree. I think they're bottom A. that you could make an argument for B like high B for me, but I I'm fine with upper A bottom A. All right, so now we got the Houston Texans. Um, I think this is either a D or F. This is an offense that um, I think does have some potential, um, but I don't think it's nothing great. I think their best player on offense, in my opinion right now, is Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks is a very underrated wide receiver. For the quarterbacks and team he has been through, for having over 1,000 yards multiple times, I mean, it's very, very impressive, in my opinion. Um, Davis Mills, obviously, he had some really good games last year, especially against us, uh, more than likely. <laughs> Um, but I think he actually had like three or four games that have thrown over 300 yards. So he actually did have a few good games, but I don't think he's ever going to be a big time starter in this league. I think he is just a, like, kind of like a bench guy just for this year. Uh, and then until next year, they get their starter. I think he's going to be a guy that's going to be in this league for maybe 12 years as a backup quarterback. I think that's yeah. a, that's a great career to have, honestly, in the league. You make a lot of money, you don't get hurt. But overall, I just don't think there's nothing too special about the Houston Texans besides Larry, um, Tunsil, um, and his, Brandon Cooks are, I think, the only two people I would really take on my team. Yeah, I agree. That's why I would think I would give this – this is a bottom D, top F. Yeah. Um, just because just I think we need more than one team with the Bears because I think they're lonely. I'm going to give it a top F. Could easily see them moving up to a D, possibly even C, depending on how Mills plays, um, depending on how Kenyon Green plays. Mechie coming back from injury, you know, he was a, supposed to be a top – receiver and after his injury fell a little bit with cooks it's kind of funny there's a lot of former jags on this offense and that's another yeah. reason they give it's it a yeah. wale chris conley dorsett jalen camp like it's aj can don't AJ forget him. can yeah there's a couple people on this list that i'm like they used to be jaguars and they were not good so yeah. if they start playing for this team um it's not going to be a good situation so that's why it's kind of an own dig to ourselves the last couple of years, but I think I think top F is where I firmly sit, but it could possibly move to pain if Mills actually does take off and not become kind of like 
of Ryan Fitzpatrick, I feel yeah. kind of career is what's looming for him. If he I can mean, overcome that, we could possibly see some moving up, but not especially with the Texans roster. If he plays well, oh yeah, like they yeah. should talk about it then. Yeah, because yeah, he, he for what he had last year, give him props, man. He had a one of the worst situations last year, and he played almost as the best rookie quarterback. So there's some for that, but I, I think it's just not enough to move it up. No, I agree 100%. Next up is the Indianapolis Colts. Obviously, the big move they made was uh, acquiring in a trade with Atlanta Falcons quarterback Matt Ryan. This Colts seems like every year just going to have a different quarterback going forward. Obviously, you have Jonathan Taylor, uh, top three running back. You can say some people argue that he is the best running back in the league, but I think he's the second best running back be- behind Derrick Henry. Yeah. You have Quail Nelson, who is arguably the best guard in football. Um, I don't think there's actually any arguing that I think he is the best guard in football. Offense line is a little shaky, especially at the left tackle position, but very much. I think overall, worst case for them, they are average offense line, but I think what Quentin Nelson makes them slightly above average. Um, I know some people rank them actually. They didn't play too well last year as a group, no. but they have a lot of good players on the offensive line. Um, and wide receiver group, people are very high on their, you know, Michael Pittman and a few others, but I'm not the biggest Michael Pittman fan. I think he's a good number two wide receiver in this league, but I don't think he's that number one guy that's really going to, you know, take him to the next level. You know, tight end group, they have Mo Alley Cox, but with Matt Ryan, I think Matt Ryan, ah, so tough. I think he's actually going to do better than Carson Wentz, but that might only give him one or one, maybe one more game. So I'm going to go ahead and say that with Jonathan Taylor, though, they are a low B. I 100% agree. I think they're slightly better than the Browns. Just because of the Browns are having per set, I like Matt Ryan more. No, um, yeah. I think, honestly, I, I said it in a Twitter post a few days ago. I mean, it might have been a week ago or so. Titans and Colts are the same team. Like, if you look at their roster, they it, really are. It's eerily similar how close they are as an organization on offense and defense. It's it's pretty crazy how similar these two teams are, and I think they're going to. Every time I look at the season, they're battling it out. They're about the same kind of win-loss, kind of just teetering with each other, and I feel like it's the perfect spot for them is right there. I hate their left tackle situation as also an Eagles fan. Matt Pryor was the backup swing tackle for the Eagles for multiple years. Um, We did not like it when he had to start for Jason Peters. So for him playing full season left tackle for a 37-year-old, one of the most immobile quarterbacks in the league with Matt Ryan, that's going to be a very bad situation i feel like for the colts moving forward um we'll see if he, he stepped up his game since then but with these wide receivers they're going to be heavily focused on the run game and if they're ever down in the second half i'm very worried for matt ryan's knees because i think he's going to get blindsided a couple of times and with being 37 years old i could see the disaster happening for the colts but i'm not gonna we can't base off injuries and what ifs Pittman, Taylor. Nelson and Matt Ryan give this team a B. Right. Yeah, plain and simple, but I, I could see this team falling apart on offense, just kind of like how it did last year. All right, perfect. Um, I'm cool if they fall apart and Titans fall apart, gives us a better chance. <laughs> but true. next up, we have the defending Super Bowl champions, the LA Rams. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that they are like the top A team, like because obviously you have Cooper Cup, um, phenomenal, obviously, wide receiver. You have Al Robinson to bring in. I think Al Robinson obviously is going to help the offense even more for, for fantasy value. I think it might drop Cooper Cup's value just a little bit because they're going to have another target for Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford, a very underrated quarterback, in my opinion. Um, obviously, they have Cam Akers. Cam Akers is going to come back from injury, you know, play the whole year more likely. Obviously, he came back for the postseason last year. Offense line, they lost a few guys, but um, overall, I still think it's, you know, pretty decent. So, just because they won a Super Bowl, yeah, Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup, I, I think they're just a good A. I, I think they're borderline S. I'm fine with putting them at A um, just because I think Cooper Cup, Allen Robinson, Van Jefferson, there's rumors that Odell's going to play for them. Yeah, I um, think they're just waiting until he's fully – they'll sign him in October or whatever. Yeah, I think he's just going to wait and play his off. He's a new dad. I'm sure he's not taking any, like, calls right this moment. I think he's just kind of enjoying life, winning a Super Bowl, being a dad. So, you know, take his time. But he could be playing in October, and if he joins this team, it's an S team. But I think right now, in my opinion, I think they're the top A just because they proved it. They were really, really good on offense last year, and that was without Cam Akers. Cooper Cup was the best wide receiver in a very – he set up multiple records. So 
you have Cooper Cup, Allen Robinson, Van Jefferson. Higby's not bad. Their offensive line is pretty much the same offensive line they had in the Super Bowl, and that played pretty well. Um, so I, I feel like they're still an A team where if they maybe had a couple more offensive line pieces, I could see this being an S, but I do think their offensive line is not going to be as good as it was the last two years. No, yeah, I, I agree 100%. Um, but like I agree with, you know, if Odell, if they do bring Odell back, definitely I think they're lower S or mm-hmm. middle S. Yeah. Next up is the Chargers, a team that has come so close to the playoffs for like two years in a row. They have a star-studded quarterback in uh, Justin Herbert. They have a good uh, running back in Austin Eckler. Obviously, have Mike Williams, Keenan Allen. The offense is there to be good. It's just hopefully their coach can make some great decisions and not call timeouts in a bad situation where they miss the playoffs. Um, I think they are an S tier on that, but it's, for me, it's like are they be after Tom Brady and the Bucks or before Tom Brady and the Bucks? I just like Tom Brady just because it's Tom Brady. Yeah. And Justin Herbert. I'm going to take Tom Brady over Justin Herbert. And we're kind of going off this almost, it's not a QB tier, obviously, but that's the most important position in all of football, especially if we're looking at just the offense. I think they're a very similar team. And I'm going to take Brady over Herbert. But yeah, I think they're right there with them as well. We agree on that one. All right. Perfect. Next up is the Raiders. And man, I'll tell you what, Derek Carr has so much on his plate. Like if he can't take them to the next level, I, I don't want to say they're going to start looking for a new quarterback, but when you have Devontae Adams, you have Hunter Renfer, who a lot of defensive players say he is one of the best route runners in all, yeah. all of football. Um, they have Josh Jacobs. They drafted uh, some other running backs. The offense line is pretty good, in my opinion. Darren Waller, one of the best tight ends in the league. I mean, they have all the tools to make a Super Bowl run, um, but it's obviously going to de- depend on on Derek Carr. Now I can, I can either give them an S behind the chargers or an A behind the Rams. It's just, I'm really iffy on that right now. Uh, Where would you put them at? I was already thinking this spot. I think it's the perfect spot. Um, I like Stafford over Carr, Um, Cup and Adams are about tied. They have a bet. It's, it's tough, man. Um, I think their offensive line is what kills them for me, especially their interior. Their interior is not very strong. Um, I think their tackles will be fine with Miller and I think Leatherwood will be fine at right tackle. Um, but Renfro Adams, they got Keelan Cole on the team. Yep. Um, and Jacobs Drake is good. They picked up Zamir White. So I, I just feel like this is a solid A tier where if Derek Carr plays his best football of his career can move into S tier, especially with the Devonte Adams that who, maybe that's what he needed. Uh, I don't think anybody would hurt with Devontae Adams adding to the roster. So this team could easily be S tier, but I think Derek Carr and the interior offensive line just hold it solid at like the top A that have potential to move to S. No, yeah, but I think that's actually a really good spot right there. Um, next up is the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs, obviously, you know, you let the Tyreek Hill go, that trading him to the Dolphins, that's like a huge loss in my opinion. But you bring you draft some like Sky Moore, who I think has a lot of potential. Um I think who is it? Justin Ross. They got undrafted, who apparently is having a phenomenal mini camp, rookie mini camp. Juju came over as well. I think Juju has a potential to go back to how he played his rookie year when he had AB. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see. I think they got a little bit better off the line. But when you have Patrick Mahomes, one of the best quarterbacks in the league, I think they're automatically going to be S tier. Um, I think they're actually behind Tom Brady. If they had Tyreek Hill still, I would put them above um, the Bucks. They have Tyreek Hill, the best offense in football. Yes. Yeah. Plain and simple. We saw against the Bills. Um, that proved it right then and there that pack from Mahomes and Tyree kill. I am shocked. They let him go. Um, I understand that the cap is kind of real and you paid Kelsey, you paid Patrick Mahomes, real money, Orlando Brown, like Creed Humphrey is going to be due top center money, but man, it, I can't believe they got rid of Tyree kill. Like I, there, it's still like, I remember when seeing the rumors that day of just being like, I thought they were fake. You know, I was like, there's no way that this is how it kind of happened out of nowhere. That really brought him down. But Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, they their wide receiver room is now deeper than ever before, though. That's one good thing. But missing Tyree Kill is it I agree. I would almost even take the argument below the Chargers, but Patrick Mahomes is I can't put Patrick Mahomes as who's the best quarterback in football, in my opinion as like the fourth best offense with him and Andy Reid still. I, I feel like you just can't. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Uh, next next up is a pretty interesting team, the New Orleans Saints. Jameis Winston last year, before he got hurt, he was on pace for like 37 touchdowns and six picks. Yeah. He was actually playing very good football for the Saints. 
offense line still pretty good, even though they lost um, Armstead to the Dolphins. Michael Thomas is coming back from an uh, injury. I don't think he played at all last year, so he should no. be a full go. He signed Jarvis Landry. Who was the rookie they drafted again? Chris Olave. Yeah, Chris Olave. Obviously, have Kamara, who Kamara apparently is um, suspecting probably a six game suspension, but I say anywhere from four to six games. I'll say what if Kamara was not suspe- would not be suspended at all, I think they would be a, a good B tier. Yeah. But because of his suspension, more likely, and obviously Jameis Winston, since we didn't get to see a full year of him last year, I, th- I think they're a C tier, but I think they're above the Lions. Okay. So we're going here. Um, I agree. I, I feel like this could be a B tier. Um, yeah. I, but if Kamara is missing significant time, Landry has regressed. Michael Thomas has had a significant injuries that last year where he didn't even see the field and he had a weird situation where he waited to have surgery and yes. then he re-injured it later and that's why he didn't come back. So that's always a tricky kind of situation, what's happening there. He made sometimes those little weird injuries just ruin your career. So we that's up in the air. Winston's in the air. Kamara's up in the air. Really good team. Could easily end up as a, B, a top B, or B team, but there's too many uncertainties with this team. And all those equate to suspensions and injuries, and that's not and a good thing. That's, and you lost your left tackle. It, it's Mark Ingram's getting older. He's not what he used to be. They don't really know what Tyson Hill is. So I, I just feel like there's – yeah, you lost your lost the head coach. I, it's just I feel like top C – is probably the best situation for the Saints. All right, so another uh, greens there. Next up is New York Giants. Daniel Jones is last year 100%. I don't think yeah, he's taking that step at all. Nope. Um, obviously, Barkley, I'm very high on Barkley this year. I, I really don't think he was 100% last year going into the season at all. Yeah. Um, and he, re, you know, he ended up getting injured as well with his ankle. I still think Barkley can be a very good running back in this league. You know, you have some other good offense weapons. Kenny Galladay, we'll see what happens with Kadarius Tony. Seems like he's actually going to practice, see if they can get him, you know, football focused. Um, I think they have a good young team. I really like the coaching staff. I'm going to be completely honest. I think yeah. the coaching staff's awesome. I yep. think it's built incredibly on the offense and defensive side of the ball. But with uh, Daniel Jones, I don't think he's a good quarterback. So that's why I don't think they're F tier, but because they do have some pieces, I think they are high D. I 100% agree. This is where I was going to put them. Um, I think they got Evan Neal. Their offensive line's coming together with Andrew Thomas, too. And if this, if Tony can be legit and Barkley can be healthy, this is actually a decent offense. Yeah. Daniel Jones, though, is a turnover machine. He leaves, like, ever since he entered the league, he leaves the league in turnovers. Like, we're talking interceptions and fumbles. He just isn't good. They completely whiffed on that, and I think they're going to be buying for one of the top quarterbacks coming into next year's draft, and I agree. I think they're going to be a bottom probably five or six offense just because of Daniel Jones specifically and no other reasons, like you said. I like a lot of pieces around them. They're getting better offensive line. I really like the coaching staff, but Daniel Jones is just – he's not better than Carson Wentz, and Carson Wentz in the C tier. So I I would even almost take an argument the Falcons over – the Giants. I think these two teams are very comparable in their ranking. All right, perfect. Next up is your beloved Eagles. Uh, as some people might not know, uh, Brandon here is an Eagles and Jags fan. So this can be interesting right here. Now, I think they are a low A because of the fact that I think uh, they have a great uh, duo with A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Miles Sanders. They ran the ball well with them last year. You have Kenneth Gainwell, offense line still good. Um, you have um, Dallas Goddard. Um, I think overall it, it's a good team. Question mark is Jalen Hurts. Can he improve? If he improves, I think they are like top, like in A or even potentially even be low S. That's just my opinion. Um, so that's why I think they are a high A. I think I, I agree. I would put them below the Baltimore Ravens um, just because I feel like coaching staff, Lamar Jackson is more stable. I think the Eagles may have a better overall offense but Lamar Jackson at this moment is better quarterback than Jalen Hurts yeah um I think Jalen Hurts if Jalen Hurts is legit he's put on muscle they showed like before and after like a year ago pick and he 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 looks different it, it's not like uh oh you know he put like Lamar he kind of looks like Lamar Jackson low they kind of look very similar right now build wise um he's one of the fastest QBs in the league right there with I think the Eagles and the Ravens are gonna have very very similar offenses I think the Eagles have way better wide receivers however with Smith and Brown Watkins and then Zach Pascal I, I think they actually have a good 
but I just feel like they're behind the Ravens just because they've had less time, obviously, to run this offense. So I feel like that's a very good comparison between the Ravens and the Eagles. A lot of people are down on the Eagles this year and saying, like, they're barely a playoff team, which is surprising to me considering they went to the playoffs last year and they lost to a superior Bucs team. But all this team did was get much better and Jalen Hurts another full year kind of situation. So I feel like this team is – when you look at the numbers there, I think this is a perfect spot for them. I agree 100%. You know, I feel like Jalen Hurts and Derek Carr kind of in a similar boat. They both had the pieces around yeah. each other. They both had to take the next step because if they don't, um, the Eagles probably might be potentially they have the draft capital next year to look at a quarterback if, if he regresses. I don't think he's going to, but if he regresses, this team goes from a from an A to a B. Just, they already had the weapons yeah. on the list. They'll be a worst case of B. But Jalen Hurts, he has no excuses right now, like none. Yeah. For the offense line he has, he has the running backs, tight end, wide receivers. So, I mean, this should be a playoff contender. I think they're a top four team in the NFC. Um, I think I would put them third behind the uh, the Bucks and the Rams. Yeah, I that's that's where I pretty much have them as well too. Um, I think the Packers are flirting just because Aaron Rodgers. Um, yes. And overall team wise, the Packers defense is actually really good, but so is the Eagles. So we'll see what happens. But I, I really like this Eagles team. And I think this is, like you said, it's Jalen Hurts' year. He's either going to get traded or he's going to get, like, not obvious, probably like Lamar Jackson money, you know, kind of situation. He's going to get paid really well, probably like top seven, top five quarterback in the league. Um, obviously, after his contract, he'll be more down lower but he's going to get one of the top quarterback monies if he gets his team to the playoffs and they do well in the playoffs and mainly because of him, but it's all up in the air, but I think he has the pieces that he can do it. Absolutely. Next, next up is the Steelers who are a very interesting team. I assume Kenny Pickett is going to be the starting quarterback. That's kind of what I've heard, but I, I think Mitchell Trubisky deserves at least the shot. to you know, be the starter. Um, overall, you have Najee Harris, they redid the offensive line, I believe, uh, a little bit at least. Um, a little bit. They added James Daniels, who's like very 20, unrated. He's like 22 and like been in the league for like three or four years. Yeah, and he's from he's the, the youngest like player ever drafted. And yeah. I'm, I'm shocked the Bears let him go. Yeah, he's a good addition. And and they didn't. It wasn't a hefty price for what they signed for a three year deal with him. Yeah, it's insane. And you have Deontay Johnson, who I think is a very uh, upcoming, really good wide receiver. You have a uh, Claypool. Apparently, to him, he's a top three wide receiver. Um, to him. To him. Um, he also got George Pickens from Georgia, who I think can be a really good wide receiver in this league. Um, so overall, I think there's a lot of good pieces on the uh, offensive uh, side of the ball. It's the question mark of quarterbacks. That's, you know, where I'm like kind of, am I putting him in the B or C range? I'm going to give him a, a low B just because of the fact they have Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin has not lost, had a losing season ever yet. Now, potentially this could be his first year, but until I see it, I'm always going to give them at least a B. The only reason he would get below 500, I feel like, is just because of what's happening right now in the AFC, and the AFC is oh, so yeah. dominant. And you're going to have to play the AFC. It doesn't matter what. And then they're not facing the AFC South. So guess what? They're facing a really good division. So um, I, I feel like that would be the only reason they get below 500. I think this team is going to be pretty good. I, Mitchell Brissy actually has, like, a better overall record than Deshaun Watson, um, yeah. which is crazy to think about. And that's with the Bears. So you never know. Trubisky could actually, he took a year off to learn behind Dable and Josh Allen. Maybe he could take somewhat of a leap and maybe he can tell Kenny Pickett, hey, guess what, hometown kid? I'm I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win this job. And right now he's getting all the first team reps, which is what he should get. We'll see how training camp goes out and maybe they split reps. We'll start seeing what's going to happen. But as of right now, I actually kind of like this team. I think they're about a 500 team. And I think the offense kind of fits right in that between like right here, I think is a really good fit for them. Yeah, 100%. Um, next up is Denver Broncos. Where would you place them at? Man, this is a tough one because when I look at their roster, like Russell Wilson, obviously they're not going to be below a C, like given. Their offensive line gives me some worries, like some pretty big worries. It's not a great offensive line, um, but their wide receiving core is legit. Their running back core is legit. You got Russell Wilson. I feel like – it belongs above the Raiders. That's that's funny. I was exactly I was going to put them or right behind the Raiders. Yeah, I, I feel like Russell. I like Russell Wilson more than Derek Carr. I like their running back duo, the Broncos, more than the Raiders. I think they both have similar offensive line issues. 
Raiders may overall have a better wide receiver, but I think the Broncos have a deeper wide receiver depth. So I think when you add all that in together, they're slightly above the Raiders. Only reason not over the Rams is just because the Rams have proved it. While this is a brand new team, it's going to take some time for them to gel together. It's just going to. So I feel like they may have some struggles here and there in some games, but overall, I think it's a very good offense. Yep, I, I think that's a good spot to put them. Um, next up is we have the Green Bay Packers. Um, obviously, with Aaron Rodgers, I think they're going to be an S team, um, even though they did obviously trade away Devonta Adams. They still have uh, Aaron Jones, Robert Tunyon. They have a good offensive line. Um, they also drafted a guy in uh, Kristen Watson from North uh, the, Dakota State, who I think is actually could be a really good wide receiver in this league. But when you have uh, at least Aaron Rodgers, I think you're in, in the NFC this year. At minimum, he's probably getting 11 wins. That's minimum with the NFC. And I think overall, you know, it's kind of like with Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, you know, some of the best quarterbacks in the league, they're going to, and quarterback is the most important position in this league. They're, they're an S team because of Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Their offensive line is really good too. And it's just, I think everything about this team minus the wide receiving core is S tier. So I think you kind of have maybe tight end. So I think that's a very good position for them. I think is the bottom of the S tier. I feel like. Yeah. Um, next up is the Carolina Panthers. Uh, so this is interesting. I was either going to say high D or low C. I, I, right now, I, as I'm speaking, I'm kind of leaning as like the lowest C because they have Christian McCaffrey. Long as he comes back, you know, healthy. They have DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson. They have young pieces on that offense. The offense line, you know, it, it's not, you know, terrible, but it's not great. I think it's just, you know, average. Um, the quarterback situation, I don't think, with Sam Donald is very good. Yeah, at all. That's why I was kind of thinking C or D. But since they have DJ Moore, Christian McCaffrey, I think they are a low C. I completely agree. I think, and who knows? I remember they were trying to trade Christian McCaffrey at some point. At least that's what the rumor was. I think that was when they were going for like Deshaun Watson potentially. That he was yeah. in the package. So we'll see what happens, man. I don't know. Sam Darnold's not good. Um, Matt Corral could possibly start at some point this year. Uh, we'll see. There's rumors that they might try to get Baker. They might try to get Jimmy Garoppolo, but it's kind of weird that it hasn't happened yet. They might wait for one of those quarterbacks to get cut. Um, offensive line isn't great. It's building. I mean, I forgot they added Bradley Bozeman from um, – they, they added Austin Corbett, Taylor Morin, drafted a Quanu, um, big time on a Quanu to make the starting left tackle. Like, yeah. he's a big thing. If he can, if he can be really good, offensive line is good. I like the Tommy Tremble kid. Um, oh, tight end, uh, yep. Me yeah, too. the tight end. Um, I think he could be good. He's not going to be great, but I think he could make a little bit of a splash. DJ Moore is an elite receiver that has terrible quarterbacks situation. So I agree. I feel like if they had a better quarterback, this is a solid B yep. tier team, but Sam Darnold's just so bad. And right now, Sam Darnold's starting quarterback. I don't see too much improvement, even if it is Baker, to be honest. So slight improvement, but I think this is a C tier team all the way through just because the quarterback plays so bad. Yeah, no, I agree 100 percent Um, next up is the Arizona Cardinals. Where do you have them placed at? This is a tricky team. Um, it could easily be it could almost be an S tier. Uh, but with Hopkins being suspended for six months, and that's a solid six months. He lost his appeal, everything like that he is going to be suspended for six months. Six months, um, six games. Six games. Yeah, six months. You know, you know what I mean? Six yeah, games. Yeah. Was uh, maybe, sure. No, it's not six months. Um, it's just Zach it Ertz. Like is, I like Zach Ertz and Trey McBride. Max Williams, man, they may have the best tight end court in the league with Max Williams, Trey McBride, and Zach Ertz. AJ Green's getting old, but Marquise Brown and Rondell Moore are just explosive. And when DeAndre Hopkins comes back and he's going to be rested for the back half of the season with Kyler Murray, if James Conner having a breakout year last year, I mean, he was already good, but he had a real breakout year last year. Ah, man, I'm fighting to put this team at top A, bottom S situation here. In my personal opinion, I, I look at this team and I think it's really good. It's deep and it has just explosiveness everywhere. But I think I'm going to have to put it below the Rams just because that last playoff game, really put a bad taste in my mouth for this team. Yeah. Kyler Murray's being a drama queen already with his contract, even though he's still like two years away from it. It's just, and then the, um, who's that coach's name? Um, Cliff Kingsbury. He's on a hot seat. Yeah, yeah he's on a hot seat. Yeah, 
he he sh- he's on a hot seat. Their playoff was so bad that I I just don't know. I can't put him over the Rams. I feel like they should be an S tier, but because of Hopkins suspension, because of the coaching, because of like some of the drama, they're going to be the hard knocks team. Um, so we'll really get to see what's happening there. I just feel like top A is fine, but I feel like they could easily be top S. I think that's a good spot. I was actually going to put them right behind the Raiders just because it's a switch away, but we'll keep them right there. Um, we can, I can make, we can make it a little, we can make a compromise. Is that fine with you? Yeah, that's perfect. Um, Cliff Kingsbury, he's on the hot seat. They for like two or three years in a row, they started hot, um, and then they just completely like kind of went on a losing streak, picked it back up, and then obviously last year they that was just so bad in the playoffs. I think they they can't keep starting like you know five and two or seven and zero every year and then going on a four or five game losing streak. Yeah, you can't do that. Eventually, you know something's got to give. Cal Murray, I think, I think there's a lot of areas he can improve on, but I think overall where he's at currently, it's a good spot as a quarterback. Uh, a lot of people don't talk about this, but him and uh, Marquise Brown were, were college teammates. Yeah. And I think Marquise Brown is actually going to shine with the Cardinals. And I want to be surprised after two years or whatever, they move on from DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins is going to be 30 soon. Yeah. Um, and then obviously you're going to want to pay Brown and then he's their number one. But once he comes back, kind of like what you said, Hopkins, they're going to have a good nasty four right there. And then that's not even counting the tight end group. Yeah. Like I said, I, this team could easily move into the S tier, but just yeah. as of right now, it's just there's a lot of stuff in the air, and they didn't. The last game of the year was just terrible. It was one of the worst performances I've almost ever seen in the playoff situation, yes. and that's going to count for something because it's basically the same offense minus Christian Kirk meet Marquise Brown kind of situation. And I think they're going to play very. I think they're going to play Marquise Brown in the Christian Kirk role. He's going to be the vertical slot because that's yeah. what that's just what he's good at. So we'll see what happens, but I feel like this is a good spot, and I think we're ready to move on to the Bills. No, I agree 100%. Uh, the Buffalo Bills. Now, if we were doing like a, a, a tier list on who I think is the best team, Buffalo, I think, would, would be my number one. Yeah. I think they're all the best team. Um, but because we're doing offense, I think they are right behind the Cincinnati Bengals right now. Um, just because, obviously, Diggs, I think, is a is top five wide receiver, whatever. Um, but the Bengals have a better trio. I think Gabe mm-hmm. Davis is very underrated. Yeah. Um, Emmanuel Sanders, I believe, is afraid so they don't have him anymore. But Obviously, you know, they get their, uh, their running back in, in the draft. Their um, offensive line's good, but you have Josh Allen, who I think is one of the best quarterbacks in the league and I think has a very good chance to be MVP this year. But since we are only ranking um, the offense upside of the ball, that's why I'm going to go ahead and put them right behind the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, I agree on basically everything. Um, it definitely comes down to the running back and wide receiver overall. This, I guess, David Singletary and James Cook versus – Joe Mixon and Samaji Perrine. I'm going to take Bengals. And then the wide receiving core, Gabriel Davis is nice, but he's, he's not better than Higgins or Boyd. And James Crowder certainly isn't. So yeah. you look at it and you go, there, there's no way you can put him ahead of the Bengals. I think Burrow is going to be on the path that's just as good as Josh Allen. Um, I think their offensive line is probably almost even better than the Bills, if not the same. So just all those things, I just think the Bengals, like you said, I think they're just slightly ahead of the Bills. As an offense, I think we're as an offense, yeah. The as an overall team, I'm taking the. I'm a one. I think almost everybody has the Bills as the best team overall this year, um, yeah. especially the out of Von Miller. We'll do a defensive episode of this same exact thing in a few days, but we'll see where that lands them. But as of right now, definitely, I think as offense wise, second best in the league. Absolutely. Um, next up is the Seattle Seahawks. Um, their quarterback, either Geno Smith or Drew Locke. And Pete Curl, I think this might be his year that he retires after this year, maybe next year potentially. Um, obviously, you have DK Metcalf and uh, DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, a pretty good duo right there. But their quarterback situation, offensive line, uh, besides, you know, they drafted a cross, I believe, right from Mississippi. Yeah. Um, so they obviously somewhat improved the offensive line. Running back situation, I don't think is the best is the, out there. Um, and but that what's going for them is that they're, they are in the NFC, but the bad thing is they're in the probably the toughest division in the NFC. Yeah. Um, they're probably going to get last, but. I was either going to say low C or high D, but just because uh, it's tough. Their quarterback situation is bad. It's like, really bad. bad. It, it might be the worst in all of football, in my opinion. Because you have the because you have the wide receiver deal with DK and Tyler Lockett. I'm going to say they're the best D tier. I, I would agree. Um, Geno Smith isn't – he's he's bad. He, he's really bad. But he, he's right up there with Daniel Jones and Marcus Mariota. I, know, yeah. I feel like there isn't that much of a drop-off. And then you take – 
Metcalf and Lockett, um, Noah Fant, Penny, Walker, Carson is a good running back trio. They got their left tackle to move forward with. So it's just like they have a few more pieces of the Giants and the Falcons. But yeah, you're right. The, the, this team may possibly not win that many. <laughs> they're not going to win that many games. They could get the number one overall seed, um, which may keep Pete Carroll. We'll see what happens, but I agree with you. I feel like if they don't or kind of like pick number five or six kind of situation, he might just call it quits Um, because the quarterbacks are going to be gone by that point unless you trade everything to move up, which they don't really have a ton. So I agree with this. I think D is a perfect – because they're not D, they're not F. I mean, not C, they're not F. So I feel like D is fine. Absolutely. Um, Next up, the New England Patriots. They didn't do much in free agency or the draft really um, to, you know, help improve the offense. Mac Jones, who had played, you know, he, he's, he was in the right system. He's the Patriots system, chucked it, a check down. That's basically what he is. Mm-hmm. Yep. Check down, eventually throw that deep ball every once in a while. Uh, made the Pro Bowl because, you know, he had good stats, you know, whatever. Um, I, I don't think their offense is nothing special at all. I, I think they're a C. I think they're actually slightly above Washington, but be behind the Jets. That's where I would put them. Ooh. This one's tough. The Patriots actually had a really good offense last year. Like if you actually look at it, they were they were actually I mean, they scored. Good. They scored a lot of points. They did. I had Damian Harris. He had 15 touchdowns last year. 15. And then you had Hunter Henry, Johnny Smith. They they did add Devontae Parker. They um, did. But they also got rid of Shaq Mason. So it's like, what are you gonna do? And then I mean, they, Belichick right now is the offensive coordinator. Do you think well, that's I the other thing we got to put into the thing? They don't have an offensive coordinator. I think they said uh, Mac Patricia is going to be the offensive play coordinator. Caller. Yeah. But, but Belichick is technically the offensive coordinator during training camp. But when they get to the season, Patricia is going to be like the run game. And then I think um, Joe Judge is going to be like the passing game. And then Belichick is like the decision. It's a weird situation. Um, you think they're a C though? Or where do you think that? I, I would put them slightly. I, I would put them here. I'm cool with that. Um, I'm, it's not terribly far off, but I just feel like. Matt Jones is a serviceable quarterback. They were a top B team last year. If you yeah. really look at their other offensive ratings. So I don't necessarily think they should be behind that many people. But when you look at their roster and you look at the rosters that are here, I would, I like these rosters a whole lot more than I like the Patriots roster, but for some yeah, reason, sure. this Bill Belichick, they're going to end up probably in the top B They'll probably will be yeah. But at some point Belichick's going to have to fall. And I feel like there's a lot of pieces that are falling right now. I don't understand their off season moves. They got rid of a lot of good players in the off season. And then they drafted really weird too. They drafted Cole strange as their first pick. They were going to probably get Devin Lloyd, but the Jags moved up ahead of them to get them. But then they fall back to Cole Strange. They could have just traded out and like gotten more picks or what. So it's weird what's happening there in New England. I'm curious, but I feel like it's still Belichick. And I even feel like a C is kind of like too low, but I really don't like their team on paper. So yeah. it's just it, they're they're a hard team to rank, I feel like. No, I agree 100 percent But there it is, everyone. There is our offensive rankings uh, from top tier all the way down to, to the worst offense in the league. But go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm going to also put a link to our other channel, 9 and 4 and more. Definitely go check our channel out and hit subscribe as well. Um, but other than that, thanks for watching and go Jags. Go Jags.